Welcome to lecture 5. We're using the text Elementary Linear Algebra 7th edition by Ron Larson, Sengage Learning. In lecture 4, we defined Gaussian elimination and Gauss Jordan elimination. In this lecture, we would go through a few examples to illustrate these concepts. We recall that the Gaussian elimination leads to an REF or the row echelon form and the Gauss Jordan elimination leads to the RREF reduced row echelon form. We start off with the first example. Solve the following system. Now step one would be to get the augmented matrix which will be the matrix of coefficients together with the matrix of uh, constants on the right hand side so together we have the augmented matrix so let's start off with row 1 the first coefficient the coefficient of x1 is 0 and the coefficient of x2 is 1 the coefficient of x3 is 1 the coefficient of x4 is negative 2 and the constant on the right hand side is negative 3 we can skip down to row 4. The coefficient of x1 is 1. The coefficient of x2 is negative 4. The coefficient of x3 is negative 7. The coefficient of x4 is negative 1. And the constant on the right hand side is negative 19. So this is our augmented matrix. In step 2, we perform Gaussian elimination. We want a row leading one in the first row. Now we do not have a row leading one. We have a zero at this position. So we interchange rows one and two to have a row leading one. So our row two becomes the new row one and row one becomes the new row two. Now we have a row leading one. What we have to do is to clear out this column. In other words, we need zeros in these positions. Now we already have zero right here in the first place in row two, so we're good. Row three, we need a zero in this place, so what do we do? We multiply row one by negative two and add that to row three and leave our answer in row three. In row four, we multiply row one by negative one, add that to row four and leave our answer in row four. That would clear the first column. So we perform the operation. So let's uh, do one of these. Let's look at row 3. So I multiply negative 1 times 2 plus 2. That gives me 0. Over here, I multiply 2 by negative 2. That gives me negative 4 plus 4. That gives me 0. Negative 1 times negative 2. 2 that gives me a 2 I add that to 1 that gives me 3 and negative 2 times 0 is 0 I add that to negative 3 that gives me negative 3 and over here I have negative 2 times 2 which is negative 4 and add that to negative 2 we have negative 6 and we perform the operation negative r1 plus r4 put the answer in row 4 and we end up with this new row 4 and we recall that this is an equivalent augmented matrix to our original augmented matrix we have simply performed what is known as elementary operations now the next task would be to get a 1 uh, in this position we already have a 1 so that's good now we have to clear uh, this corresponding column the numbers directly below the row leading one we have a zero in this position so we're good this does not need uh, any other manipulation or computation but we have a negative six in this position so how do we clear that out we multiply row two by six and add to row four and that would give us a zero so the next matrix we perform that operation we multiply row 2 by 6, add that to row 4, and leave our answer in row 4. And we end up with 
an equivalent augmented matrix to the former equivalent augmented matrices. Okay, so we multiplied row 2 by 6, added that to row 4, put our answer in row 4. So row 4 becomes 0, 0, 0, negative 13, negative 39. And row 3 is 0, 0, 3, negative 3, 6. We want a 0 in this position. That is our row leading 1. Remember, if a row is not made entirely of zeros, the first non-zero entry has to be a 1. So we need a row leading 1 in this position. So what we do is we multiply row 3 by 1 third. That will give us a 1 in this position. Okay, so uh, right here we have 1 third row 3. Give the answer in row 3. And... Just to make life easy for us, we can also multiply uh, row 4 by 1 over negative uh, 13 to also give us a 1 in this position. You can do that in two steps. That's okay. Okay, so that would give us our new row 3 and our new row 4. We now have uh, row leading 1s. So row 3, these are row leading 1. We have to clear out. Uh, this value is already cleared out, so life is good. Uh, so the next thing would be to get a row leading one in this position, which we did in one step. So we're done. This is row echelon form, an REF. Observe that if uh, you were to follow this main diagonal right here, all these are ones, and below the ones we have all zeros so basically we would define to you later this uh, this kind of system will be called an upper triangular matrix right here so these are all zeros and some of these are non zeros okay so the final step would be to get a corresponding system from uh, Gaussian elimination so the system would be x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 equals 2, x2 plus x3 minus 2x4 equals negative 3, x3 minus x4 equals negative 2, x4 equals 3, and we can solve by back substitution, starting with x4, and then solving for x3, solving for x2, solving for x1, and our answers would be 3, 1, 2, negative 1, respectively. So that is an example of an REF. Okay, in example 2, I would introduce the RREF, or the reduced row echelon form. Solve the following system. Again, the first thing you do is get the augmented matrix. We need a 1 in this first position, the row leading 1. And once that is gotten, we have to clear the column. Now, in a reduced row echelon form, we do not only clear the values that are below the, the row leading 1. We clear all the values above and below the row leading 1. That's what makes it an RREF. So let's start off with row 1. We have a row leading 1, so we're good. To clear the first column, we would multiply row 1 by 1, add that to row 2, and leave the answer in row 2. We multiply row 1 by negative 2, add to row 3, leave the answer in row 3. Now we perform that operation, and that clears... The column, all we have in this column is our row leading 1. The next target will be to create a 1 in this position. Since this row is not made entirely of zeros, it must start with a row leading 1. Now, we already have a row leading 1, so all we have to do is clear the column. That means this value here has to be 0, and this value also has to be 0. To clear this, I multiply row 2 by 2.
2 and add to row 1 and leave the answer in row 1. To clear this negative 1, I multiply row 2 by 1, add to row 3, leave the answer in row 3. Now observe that when these operations are performed, the first column that has already been cleared out will not be affected. These operations would lead to the second column being cleared out except for the row leading one. I move over to the third column. So the next target would be to find a one in this position where there is a two. So what I do is I multiply row three by one half and leave the answer in row three. Now this would give me a row leading one in the third row. I now use this row leading one to clear out these other values, to clear out a column. So I multiply row 3 by negative 3 and add that to row 2. I multiply row 3 by negative 9 and add that to row 1. And that would clear out the column. So I look at the first column, the second column. And the third, all I have are the row leading ones. This system is now in an RREF, that is a reduced row echelon form. And we can read off the solution directly. X equals 1, Y equals negative 1, and Z equals 2. You would now see why from this position we would mostly reduce a system to an RREF instead of an REF because we would be able to read off the solution directly and there will be no need for a back substitution to be able to find the answers. Okay the third example is an example illustrating the concept of infinitely many solutions. Solve this system. Now I want you to realize quickly that we have uh, two equations and three unknowns. That's good uh, recipe for infinitely many solutions. So the first thing is I need a one in this position and my row two doesn't have a one. So I have to start by dividing row one by whatever value I have in this position. Good for us. Everything divides out nicely. So I multiply row one by one half, leave the answer in row one. And this is my new row 1 from the augmented matrix. And I can use my row 1 to clear out uh, the second row. I need these three gone. So multiply row 1 by negative 3. Add that to row 2. And that creates a 0. And this is my new augmented system. This negative 1 has to be a row leading 1. So I multiply row 2 by negative 1. And that creates a row leading one. Now I'm done. I have my row leading ones right here. So the corresponding system is x1 plus 5x3 equals 2, x2 minus 3x3 equals 1. We see that x3 would be a free variable. So I solve for x1 and x2 in terms of x3 x3 being a free variable, I set that equal to some parameter t, which has to be a real number. And my parametric uh, system of solutions would be x1 equals 2 minus 5t, x2 equals negative 1 plus 3t, and x3 equals t, with emphasis that t has to be a real number. Okay, before we conclude this section, let's look at an example involving homogeneous systems. I had mentioned before that a homogeneous system is always consistent because it has at least the trivial solution. If I take x1 to be equal to x2 to be equal to x3 to be equal to 0, then the system is satisfied. But I'm not really interested in just the trivial solution. So can we have uh, infinitely many solutions? So we get the augmented matrix right here. I need a 1 in this first position, again known as my row leading 1. And there is a 1 right there. So I use that 1 to clear the first column. 
I multiply row 1 by negative 2, add that to row 2, leave my answer in row 2. This gives my new system, which is equivalent to the former augmented system. And the next question would be to create a row leading 1 in this position. So I multiply uh, row 3 by 1 third and create a 1 in this position, my row leading 1. And I'm going to use this row leading 1 to clear out this column. Remember, I mentioned before that from now on, we would mostly do the RREF, which means we would clear out the entire column. So using this one, I clear out this column by multiplying row 2 by 1, adding that to row 1, and leaving my answer in row 1. And this gives me my final augmented system, which is equivalent to uh, the former augmented uh, systems. Now, the corresponding system would be x1 plus 2x3 equals 0, x2 minus x3 equals 0. And again, we can see that x3 is a free variable. So solving for x1 and x2 in terms of x3, we would have x1 equals negative 2t, x2 equals t, x3 equals t where t is a real number. Now, recall that we did say that given a system of linear equations, we could have infinitely many solutions. We could have exactly one solution. Or we may not even have a solution at all. Now, I want you to consider this system right here and take a few minutes. Use the reduced row echelon form, the REF, and verify if this system has no solution. Good luck. Thank you.